Hello everyone. Wild wolf populations in the United States have always been a topic of both intrigue and debate. With approximately 6,000 wolves now inhabiting various regions, these magnificent predators have made a stunning recovery from the brink of extinction. But how have they affected humans? To explore this today, let's examine the current state of wild wolves in the U.S., the damage they may cause, and the strategies implemented to manage their populations effectively. Don't forget to leave a comment with the number one to show your excitement. The wild wolf population in the United States is primarily concentrated in three key areas. The Northern Rockies, the Great Lakes region, and Alaska, the Northern Rockies, encompassing parts of Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming, host a thriving population of gray wolves, which were reintroduced in the 1990s. The Great Lakes region, particularly Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota, is home to a stable population of gray wolves that have naturally recolonized over the past few decades. So, what impact will this population recovery have on ecosystems and communities? One of the most significant conflicts between wolves and humans arises from livestock predation. Wolves are natural predators and often target livestock such as cattle, sheep, and goats, causing substantial economic losses for farmers and ranchers. A single wolf can kill multiple livestock animals in a single attack, leading to financial hardship for those dependent on their herds. According to the USDA in 2020, livestock losses attributed to wolves were valued at over $2 million. Besides, wolves also impact local wildlife populations, particularly ungulates like deer and elk. By preying on these species, wolves can reduce their numbers, which can be seen both positively and negatively. So, how do hunters here control and prevent the harmful effects of wild wolves? Before diving into the main content, don't forget to hit the like button to support us on our journey. Fences have long been the primary strategy for managing wild wolves and protecting livestock in the United States. There are several commonly used types of fencing, including electric wire, high tensile wire, and woven wire. Electric fences deliver a mild shock to deter coyotes. Costs can range from 25 cents to $1.50 per linear foot, depending on the quality and complexity of the system. Did you know that electric fencing has been shown to be particularly effective in keeping wolves at bay? Studies have found that high tensile electric fences can reduce livestock predation by up to 90. What are your thoughts on using non-lethal methods to manage wildlife conflicts? Have you seen or heard about the effectiveness of such measures in your community? In the battle to protect livestock and manage the wild wolf population, firearms like rifles and shotguns have become a commonly discussed tool. These weapons, often preferred for their precision and power, are utilized by farmers and ranchers who face frequent wolf encounters. Besides, legal regulations and permits play a crucial role in determining who can use these firearms and under what circumstances. 
In most states, specific permits are required for the lethal control of wolves, ensuring that these measures are taken responsibly and legally. Do you think the use of firearms is a justified method for protecting livestock from wild wolves? Why or why not? Dealing with the issue of wild wolves in the U.S. requires a multifaceted approach, and one of the measures often considered is the use of guns. One of the most significant advantages of using firearms is the ability to respond immediately to wolf threats. When a farmer or rancher spots a wolf near their livestock, the quick use of a gun can deter the predator and protect valuable animals from harm. This immediate action can prevent economic losses and provide a sense of security for those who rely on their livestock for their livelihood. However, this method comes with its own set of challenges and ethical considerations. What are your thoughts on the ethical and legal aspects of using guns to manage wolf populations? One of the primary concerns is ethical and legal in nature. Many people argue that using lethal force against wolves, a species that was once on the brink of extinction in the US, is morally questionable. There are strict regulations governing the shooting of wolves, and these laws vary significantly from state to state. This legal complexity can create confusion and potential legal consequences for those who take such measures into their own hands. Additionally, the risk of injury or death to wolves is a significant drawback. Wolves play a crucial role in maintaining the balance of their ecosystems. Their removal can lead to unintended ecological consequences, such as overpopulation of prey species, which in turn can affect vegetation and other wildlife. This delicate balance highlights the need for more sustainable and humane approaches. Do you agree with the methods mentioned above? If yes, type 1 in the comments, if not, type 0. Now, let's dive into the havoc being caused globally by an invasive species. The Komodo dragon, the world's largest lizard, is both a marvel and a menace, captivating and intimidating to those who encounter it. Native to Indonesia, these formidable reptiles inhabit the islands of Rinca, Flores, Gilai, Motang, and other areas within Komodo National Park. In today's farming documentary, we'll explore the challenges posed by Komodo dragons in Indonesia, the damage they inflict, and the measures being implemented to address these issues. How can we balance human safety with the conservation of these magnificent predators? What solutions do you think are most effective? The estimated population of Komodo dragons in Indonesia stands at approximately 5,000 individuals. Rinka Island, in particular, boasts a significant number of these reptiles, making it a focal point for both tourism and research. The rugged terrain and sparse human population on these islands provide an ideal habitat for Komodo dragons, allowing them to thrive relatively undisturbed.
Komodo dragons, being apex predators, have a significant impact on their environment. Their diet primarily consists of deer, pigs, and smaller animals, but they are also known to scavenge on carrion. Annually, Komodo dragons are estimated to cause around 15 million USD in damages. Livestock predation is particularly problematic for local farmers whose livelihoods depend heavily on their animals. A single Komodo dragon can devastate a herd of goats or pigs, leading to significant economic losses for families who are already struggling financially. While attacks on humans are relatively rare, they do occur and can be fatal. Komodo dragons have a potent venom that can cause severe injuries and, in some cases, death. The medical costs associated with treating such injuries add to the economic burden on affected communities. Additionally, the psychological impact on residents living in fear of potential attacks cannot be understated. So, what strategies did the hunters employ to combat this fierce and invasive species? The use of guns in managing Komodo dragons presents several advantages that can make this method a viable option in certain critical situations. First and foremost, firearms offer immediate threat neutralization, which is crucial in life-threatening scenarios. When a Komodo dragon poses an imminent danger to humans, moreover, the ability to quickly and effectively eliminate the threat can prevent severe injuries and fatalities. Moreover, the effectiveness of guns in preventing property damage is another key benefit. Livestock predation by Komodo dragons results in substantial economic losses for local farmers, many of whom rely on their animals for their livelihoods by having the means to defend their livestock. Farmers can reduce the financial impact of dragon attacks and safeguard their economic well-being systems. While the use of guns to manage Komodo dragons offers immediate threat neutralization, it comes with significant disadvantages that must be carefully considered. Firstly, there are substantial ethical concerns. Komodo dragons are a protected species, and the deliberate killing of these animals, even in self-defense, can provoke public outrage and a strong backlash from conservationists and animal rights advocates. Secondly, the risk of non-target injuries is a serious concern. Firearms do not discriminate between the intended target and other wildlife or even humans that might be in the vicinity. Accidental shootings can lead to the injury or death of non-target species, disrupting local ecosystems and potentially causing further ecological imbalance. Lastly, legal and regulatory challenges pose another significant disadvantage. The use of firearms against a protected species, like the Komodo dragon, requires navigating complex legal frameworks and obtaining necessary permissions 
which can be both time-consuming and bureaucratically challenging. Ensuring compliance with national and international conservation laws is crucial to avoid legal repercussions and to maintain the integrity of wildlife protection efforts. The legal intricacies involved can deter the implementation of this measure, making it a less practical solution in the long term. Do you have any effective strategies for managing Komodo dragon populations? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Feral pigs, also known as feral pigs, are becoming an increasingly serious problem in South Carolina. According to the latest estimates, the number of feral pigs in South Carolina is currently estimated to be up to 450,000. This data is compiled from Wildlife Management Agency reports and hunting information provided by the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources. In South Carolina, feral pigs favor the coastal plain with its rich vegetation and abundant water resources, creating ideal living conditions for them. However, the presence of feral pigs is not limited to this area. They are also widely distributed throughout other areas of the state, but with less density, notably, both the Piedmont region and the Blue Ridge Mountains also record feral pigs. Although the numbers are much smaller than on the coastal plain, reflecting the species' diverse adaptations to different environments. In urban areas, the presence of feral pigs has become an alarming problem. Not only do they wander into residential areas to rummage through trash cans, but they also cause great harm to the landscape and are even the cause of many serious traffic accidents. The intrusion of feral pigs into urban living spaces is posing great challenges for both communities and urban managers. The situation is even more dire in Aiken County, South Carolina, where farmers have seen losses of up to 50 of agricultural production due to feral hog devastation. Among notable incidents, the complete destruction of sweet potato fields is typical, as they are easily attacked, rummaged and rooted by wild boars. This sabotage not only significantly reduces farmers' income, but also threatens the region's food security. Faced with the challenges posed by invasive animals, hunters in South Carolina have come up with drastic solutions. Using shotguns is the first option they choose to deal with. Let's explore this thrilling and exciting hunting journey. Among hunters, shotguns are considered the preferred choice because of their versatility and effectiveness in close combat hunting. This is a powerful, reliable weapon that allows for rapid succession of shots, an essential element in the pursuit of agile prey such as wild boar,
Among the gun models trusted by the hunting community, the Remington 870 and Mossberg 500 stand out for their ability to complete tasks excellently, helping hunters achieve their goals effectively. This type of gun stands out for its ability to fire bullets in rapid succession, which is very beneficial when facing multiple targets or targets that move quickly. Gun models such as the Benelli M2 Field and Beretta A400 are widely popular among the hunting community, thanks to their ability to effectively reduce recoil, helping users shoot faster and more accurately. In addition, their ability to launch high-speed bullets also increases hunting efficiency, especially in situations requiring quick reactions. Besides, the 12-gauge shotgun is especially popular thanks to its power and versatility. However, the 20-gauge shotgun is also very effective when equipped with the right ammunition. Barrel lengths typically range from 18 to 28 inches, each offering distinct advantages. The short barrel enhances maneuverability, making it ideal for tight environments, while the long barrel aids in increased accuracy at longer distances. For wild boar hunting, heavy or large caliber bullets are often preferred to enhance killing effect. Plus, shotgun shells are affordable and easy to find at most sporting goods stores, making crop and property protection more economical than ever. The convenient access and affordability of shotgun ammunition makes it possible for civilians to effectively deal with potential threats without having to worry about financial burdens. In organized control campaigns in the southeast region of the United States, the use of shotguns has become indispensable to rapidly reduce feral pig populations. These guns provide the ability to react quickly and flexibly, which is especially important in unexpected situations such as when a wild boar suddenly launches from its hiding place, a common phenomenon in hunting. This helps hunters quickly adapt and be more effective in controlling the wild pig population protecting the environment and surrounding communities. Accompanying the hunters in the deep jungle is an army of ingenious hunting dogs, not only good at tracking but also knowledgeable about how to chase ferocious wild boars. The mission of these dogs is to corner wild boars, opening up opportunities for hunters to approach and quickly finish off their prey. This hunting method highlights the importance of using a shotgun, an indispensable weapon to maximize effectiveness in situations that require quick and decisive handling. Shotguns, while effective in many situations, may not be ideal on all terrain. In open areas such as plains or rough hills, where longer range shots are needed to be effective, the shotgun's capabilities may be limited. In these large spaces, the limited range of shotguns cannot meet the needs of effective hunting, especially when the target needs to be approached from a greater distance. Ah! 
using shotguns to hunt wild boar raises serious ethical and environmental concerns. This method not infrequently causes severe injuries to wild boars instead of humanely ending them, resulting in prolonged and unnecessary suffering for the animals. According to wildlife protection standards, this approach is generally considered unethical and should be reconsidered to ensure more humane hunting. In addition, the use of lead bullets in hunting also brings potential risks to the environment, especially soil and water pollution. This becomes even more worrying in nearby ecosystems. Water areas where lead can accumulate causing adverse impacts on biodiversity and the health of aquatic species. This not only affects water quality, but also health of all living things in it. Although hunting wild boar with shotguns poses many challenges for hunters, there is no denying the significant benefits that this weapon brings. Highly effective in controlling feral pig populations, shotguns have become an essential tool to help reduce the population of this species in South Carolina. This not only contributes to protecting the natural landscape, but also limits the negative consequences that wild pigs can cause from destroying crops to negatively affecting biodiversity. What do you think about shotgun hunting for feral hogs in South Carolina? We always appreciate and want to hear from you, so don't hesitate to share your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you for watching the program until the end. Please continue to explore more with us in upcoming videos.